Folks, I've got a really cool robot to show you today. Let's get this giant box open and dig into the details. Ooh, first look. Let's take a look at what actually came in the box. So what you're looking at right here is the Elephant Robotics My AGV robot platform. So this is a brand new piece of kit. And in this video, I'm gonna go over what it is, what's inside of this chassis, what these other objects are, and who might benefit from this kind of robot and what it's intended to do. So at a high level, this badass piece of kit is an autonomous robot platform. So that means it's got all of the sensors and motors and cameras and compute that you would expect in an all-in-one platform for mobile robotics. So the idea of this is to be able to get a huge head start on whatever project you're about to start. So let's get a look at the exterior of this robot. The first thing you'll notice is these mechanism wheels. These are omni wheels, and that means that they let the robot travel in any direction. So not only can it go forwards and backwards and turn left and right, but it also can move sideways. An important thing to note about these wheels is that they come with an encoder built in. So an encoder lets you measure the exact position of the wheel in real time. Now, this is super helpful if you're doing some kind of SLAM application, which this robot is capable of, and you want to measure how far a robot has moved in a given time. Now, the sensor near the front here is sandwiched between the protective chassis on the bottom and the top. Now, the sensor is called a LiDAR sensor, and if you're not familiar with that, basically it's a laser that spins around really fast and collects distance measurements at a really high resolution of everything around you. This is the same sensor that powers your robot vacuum and enables it to map your house. Now, on top of the SLAM sensor, it also has a five megapixel camera right there. That's super helpful if you're looking to do some kind of machine learning project and you want to measure or detect uh, certain objects in, um, in the room. And you wanna be able to use the LiDAR for the localization and mapping, but then the camera for some extra navigation or landmarks, or you wanna detect April tags or RUCO tags. So it's super useful. Now, the coolest part of this robot, in my opinion, is at the back here. So you have some I.O., you've got a Cat5 port, two USB ports, and some GPIO. Um, inside of this machine is a Raspberry Pi 4B, which is becoming pretty rare to find these days, so it might actually be the most expensive uh, piece of hardware on this robot. What I have here is the Elephant Robotics MyCobot robot arms. So if you haven't heard of this, this is a six-axis robot arm, and it comes in with some built-in compute and mounting holes that will fit perfectly with the mounting holes on this robot. Attaching these is pretty simple. You start out by putting Lego pieces in a preset pattern on the top of this robot, and then it's just a matter of sliding the robot on top. All right, that's enough introduction. Why don't we get this thing charged up and I'll show you what it can do. I've just got the robot plugged in and the first thing that's happening is we've got the Raspberry Pi boot sequence running. LiDAR is running, Let's see it spinning. Okay, so the system's all booted up and I've hooked it up to our Wi-Fi, so now I should be able to access this all remotely. Okay folks, so I'm remoted into the robot and according to the documentation, there's two ways to remote control this robot. The first way is using ROS2 to control the robot through a PS2 controller. And the second way is a command line interface where you type in go forward or backwards, uh, left or right. So I'll show you both of those next. I just tried out the teleop controls. This is what they look like. It does not work. I can't get the robot to stop moving. So the remote control seems to work a lot better. Unfortunately, I ran into an issue where one of the wheels seems to only move forwards, but not backwards. So I figured this would be a good chance to pop this thing open with my iFixit kit. Sponsor me. And see what's going on inside here and see if maybe there's a loose cable somewhere that I can fix. So you can see the Raspberry Pi peeking through here on the other end. There's a 64 gig uh, micro SD card in there, some motor controllers, but I'm not sure how to take this out quite yet. Oh boy. Okay, so here's the innards. You can see them much clearer now. Look at all that junk. 
I put the robot back together, and after that little side quest, I sent some notes to the support team to ask them some questions about how this might be fixable. I reseeded all of the plugs, and everything uh, still works except for that motor moving backwards. So for the rest of this review, I'm going to show you the robot, uh, and I'll show you um, how the movements work when you're moving forwards and sideways in the correct directions. Um, but I'll try to work around the motor moving backwards until support gets back to me. Okay, so to start off with, we've got our forwards movement, which works fine. The backwards movement, which fails because of the wheel. The right strafing movement, that one works pretty well. Let's do that again. And the left strafing movement, which is failing because of the wheel. Turning right, that's really nice. Look how it turns in place. And of course, turning left, failing because of that one wheel. So I figured we'd try out this challenging ledge case. I have a ledge right here. So first I'll move forwards and see if we can cross it while going forwards. And then I'll move sideways and we'll see if we can cross it while moving sideways. So no problem doing that. Let's try sideways. Okay, I can't seem to do that. There is one concerning thing I found out about moving in this robot. Um, on carpet, it works fine for turning and going forwards, but if I go sideways, I'm gonna press and hold sideways. And I'm still holding. So it cuts out sometimes, and then on the console, it says that it ran out of power or, or something about the current on one of the motors being too high. And last time I did this, I had a burning smell. So watch out with this robot on carpet. Let's test out the navigation stack. So for this first test, we're going to show the ability to map using the G mapping protocol. So G mapping is, uh, I believe it's Google's algorithm for real-time localization and mapping. Um, the pros and cons on the pro side, it's faster. It, um, it's able to run on this kind of lower end hardware. Um, it uses odometry, meaning it uses the wheel motion counts. Um, so I'm gonna try to move without uh, without having issues with the, the, the front right wheel not moving backwards. So I'll only move forwards and I'll turn right to try to give this the best shot for working. Um, so let's get this thing started. So I'm gonna drive this thing down my kitchen, uh, then down a hallway, and we'll see how well the map builds. That was okay. I, I can't say I'm terribly impressed with the map quality here. You can see that the uh, the hallway is slanted and, um, you know, just a lot of like straight lines that are displayed on the map as uh, as curvy. Um, but I, I suppose this is passable. Let's, uh, let's try this out again using the cartography mapping uh, tooling. So I'm spinning it up here and right off the bat, you'll notice that the mapping looks a little bit different. Instead of those uh, red circles, we've got these kind of green dots there. Let's go ahead and spin this thing up and I'll start driving it around. Okay, that looks crazy. This is my first time looking at it since we started driving it around. So. Um, I'm going to turn off odometry because that's way too much information. Um, just looking at the map, you know, I'm not terribly impressed with this. I wonder if maybe if I drove backwards, if I drove back to the original start location, if it would improve the map. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out and we'll see how this works. So, uh, you know, I'm still not super impressed with this. I think maybe this is just 
how difficult mapping can be. Um, but, you know, yeah, we do have these kind of uh, not right angles where there should be right angles. It is, I think, a little bit better than the G mapping demo. So that's worth, worth considering. So I think I've covered every piece of hardware on this robot. We've covered the different navigation options. We've done the remote control options. We've shown the camera. I think my takeaway is it's a pretty cool build. I love the hardware on this. I love that it has you know, a usable uh, LiDAR sensor. The camera is great. The Raspberry Pi is a great choice for hobbyists like myself. Um, I think if you're coming at this from the perspective of, I want to use this robot and use the software that it comes with to build some kind of application on top of it, um, it's not quite ready. I think the navigation isn't good enough to just rely on. Um, but if you're a robotic software engineer and you're already familiar with how to deploy mobile robots software, um, then you could probably run with this pretty quickly and get to work. Um, I would prefer if they used ROS2 as opposed to ROS1, but I'm told that they're working on that. And as, a, as far as the, uh, the wheel issue there, uh, I've contacted support, but um, it's only been a day, so I'm still waiting on the response. I'll put an update in the description once we get that resolved. It might just be a software issue. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stick around for the next one.